Hola, queridos amigos, ¿cómo están? ¿Muy bien? Oh, yo también. Vamos a celebrar que todos estamos bien. En la clase de hoy vamos a hablar sobre la letra X. La letra X. X en español. La X. ¿Y por qué vamos a hablar de la X? Bueno, porque la X en español tiene muchos sonidos. A veces suena como X y a veces como y a veces como... Ah, entonces vamos a ver cómo podemos analizar los sonidos de la X. Muy bien, a veces como X, a veces como X, a veces como X. Muy bien, perfecto. Now, before I forget, please go to my other videos and check out my other letters. I have a video about the G, the J, the C, the Z, the S. The so many letters and uh, the alphabet in Spanish. Don't forget it. If you already watched them, well, watch them again because maybe your Spanish got soft now. So you gotta freshen it up. It's so fresh to learn Spanish. You're f I'm feeling fresh in Spanish. Muy bien. Let's talk about the X, la X. Before I go uh, to explain to you the different sounds in Spanish, uh, like the, the different sounds of the X in Spanish, I wanted to tell you two phrases that are, are common nowadays. When you are asking someone, um, how, like, do, do you like that person? Like, for example, I asked my niece, Carol. Carol, ¿te cae bien esa chica? Like, esa muchacha. Carol, does that woman, uh, do you like that woman? I ask. ¿Te cae bien esa chica? Y Carol me contestó, X, X, eh? It's like X. She's like, Oh, X. It's like, she doesn't, like, I don't like her, I don't dislike her, she's just whatever, right? Because my, my, my niece is very like that. So it's like X. So X, when you say X, it means like you don't really bother, like, yeah, no, whatever. Muy bien. Now, the X too, like when you have an error, for example, when I'm checking my, my the exams for my students and in the high school, uh, they, they sometimes misspell the word or whatever. What do I write? X. What it means? Tache. Tache in Mexico is like tache. X is when you got the wrong answer. Because I don't want you to get the wrong answer when you do the quiz about the X or when you are pronouncing the word, then you have to pay attention because I don't want to put you a tache. I want to put you a palomita, no tache. Muy bien. Vamos a empezar con la clase. El primer sonido que te voy a explicar es de X. Now, you're going to be like a detective, really. You're going to find clues in order to figure out what the sound is. Very well then. I got you some clues, so I help you to get the right sound. Very well. X, X, K plus S. For example, éxito, axila, éxito is success, axila, armpit, <laughs> my axila, mi axila, my armpit, <laughs> exigir, to demand, exigir, exagerar, to exaggerate. The key here is that you're going to see that there is a vowel hugging the X, vowel, 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 vowel. What's the clue then? Ah, very well. When it is, when the X is between vowels, A, E, I, O, U, because in español we have A, E, I, O, U, las vocales, el burro sabe más que tú. You're going to pronounce, the sound is going to be the X. Sometimes, because we speak fast, hablamos rápido, and You know, amongst native speakers, you're like, oh, muy bien. You're going to sound maybe like gus, like éxito, like egg, like an egg. But really, the proper sound is éxito, like the K plus the S. Éxito, axila, exhibir. What's the clue? Oh, if the X is between the vowels, I'm going to pronounce it like K, K plus S. Second scenario. When the X is at the end of the word, at the end 
all the world. Listen to me. Don't take this for granted because I'm going to confuse you in a little bit, so pay attention. When the X is located at the end of the word, you're going to pronounce it like same. X, K plus S, X. Por ejemplo, climax, unisex, o relax. Sí, este es un anglicismo. It's a, uh, an English word that got into Spanish. So now you can find it in the dictionary and you pronounce it relax. Muy bien. Unisex. Unisex, por ejemplo, en México, si vas caminando, vas a ver que dice estética unisex. That means they got hair for men and women. So you say everywhere, estética unisex. You'll rarely see like only peluquería, maybe only for men. Peluquería. Uh, estética for women, but estética unisex for both. Muy bien. Climax, unisex, relax. Why? Because the X is at the end of the word, al final de la palabra, porque la X está al final de la palabra. Y aquí, porque la X está entre vocales. La X abraza dos vocales. A o E, A o O, whatever. Like la X is like, hey, hey, what's up, what's up, girls? See, like that. And here is at the end. Muy bien. Vamos a seguir. This is a very tricky one, but I'm going to tell you why. En posición final de sílaba. Same as al final de la sílaba. No palabra. Sílaba y palabra. Two different things. This is a palabra. This is the end. But here we're going to see sílaba. For example, in Spanish, the, this word has three sílabas, tres sílabas, ex, exito, ok, axila, exigir. You're going to separate syllables in Spanish, usually with a vowel and a consonant, always a vowel and a consonant. Sometimes there are parts where there are two vowels and a consonant, well, you can see that with my other videos, but a syllable is a vowel and a consonant. So when I'm saying you're going to, um, the, the sound of the X is going to be affected by the way how a syllable ends, I mean that when I say X combatiente, so we have one syllable, X combatiente. Now, you want to learn how to separate syllables in order to put the accent marks, for example. When you are learning to use accents, you need to separate syllables properly before even you learn how to put accents. So if you're interested in that, you may want to watch my other videos about that topic. But here I'm going to give you like a quick um, introduction. X com ba tiente, five syllables. But it says en posición final de sílaba. That means the first syllable has an X because here you're going to have two consonants. Two consonants in Spanish cannot be one syllable. They split. In a syllable, two consonants do not get along. They hate each other. They got to separate, right? So you have a here two consonants. You have to separate them. So then you're going to get the sound X. X combatiente expulsar, mixto, see, you have consonant, we have to separate it, we have co uh, uh, consonants, we have to separate them, so, for example, um, you're going to say ex, uh, ex combatiente, expulsar, so, you're going to see that the syllable has to have an X, because it's next to another consonant, so, we have to separate it, so, it's going to be pronounced like X, Ex combatiente, mixto. When you say, quiero una ensalada mixta, like a mixed salad. Quiero una ensalada mixta. El ex combatiente regresó al país. The ex combatant returned to the country. They expelled uh, somebody from a country. Expulsaron a una persona de la, del país. Iba a ser de la ciudad. Muy bien. And it's the same. Tlaxcala, it's a state in Mexico, Tlaxcala, the same, we're going to separate it, right? Because it's like Tlax, we cannot, we cannot hug the next consonant, so you have to have the sound 
Tlaxcala. Tlaxcales is like some, something my mom makes, like kind of like a little dough. Very delicious. Anyway, but we're not talking about that. <laughs> now, we're going to go to a different scenario. Uh, and it's different because we're not going to have the, um, the sunny side X. Uh, no, we're not going to have the sunny side X. We're going to have the S, the sound S. So when the X has an S sound is where, uh, where the X is placed at the uh, beginning of the word. And I was going to say at, at the initial of the word. In <laughs> uh, el inicio de la palabra, al comienzo de la palabra, in the beginning of the word. So you don't, you're not going to say xilófono, xenofobia, xerox. <laughs> See? No. It sounds artificial, right? Like x. Why? Well, basically because Spanish doesn't really have like those starting of the words like you never hear that right like it's always always one sound so you would say when it when it's in the beginning of the word you're going to have the sound s xilófono <laughs> no i have three words right xilófono xenophobia is xerox i actually <laughs> this is funny but i'll tell you why Silófono, xenofobia. Now you go to the Spanish dictionary. Si vas al, 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 al diccionario en español, you're going to say, like, how many words start with X? Rare, like, it's rare. We have so few words that start with X. It's uncommon. And it comes from Greek or Latin. But, for example, silófono, yeah, it's, it, do you know what a silófono is? It's like this percussion instrument. Ding, 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 ding. Um, in, in Yucatan. If you go to Yucatan in Mexico, there is a, a, an instrument called marimba. And I love marimba. And it's like usually one or two guys like playing this percussion. It's like ding, 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 ding. So it's similar to the xilófono. You can Google it, xilófono, marimba. Has a marimba, I like the sound. Uh, xilófono is a bit different, but uh, it's kind of a co like really close cousins. Like those English cousins, like they married into like in the past right like the queens like they married in families is like that closes the xilófono and the marimba put it that way it's like your first cousin muy bien uh, now xerox that's interesting right but i know it's like xerox is the photocopier but really it's like if you think about xerox you can master two rules in one word because it's at the end of the word like xerox and at the beginning of the word, like xerox. So think about the photo. When you're making a copy, things, oh, the X sound. Yes, the X sound in Spanish. So, for example, tomorrow I'm going to go to work, make a photocopy and say, oh, yeah, yesterday I took the, I, I, I taught the X sound. And it's like xerox because this photocopier is xerox. I should even get like donation for xerox for being promoting it. Anyway, my friend Brianne works at xerox. Xerox, same. Uh, muy bien, so we have covered X and S. Now, we're going to get to, uh, uh, okay, this belongs to here, okay? Don't get confused. Uh, Xochitepec, I put Sochi. Um, I forgot to give you this example. I put Sochi because it's Xochitepec, Xochimilco. Uh, me pregunto si has sido a la Ciudad de México. Y si fuiste a la Ciudad de México, probablemente fuiste a Xochimilco. Xochimilco, where you have those like little uh, canoes and you get the ding, 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 like the music on the canoe and everybody's like really drunk and the canoes are about to collapse, but they are all like, they don't even realize that. And that's where like a lot of tourists go when, when they go to Mexico City, right? Like they really have fun. Uh, but it's like really contaminated, like really contaminated. I think you put one finger like, like one centimeter of your finger and you cannot see the end <laughs> through the water. But nobody takes a shower unless they are too drunk and just like they, they fall, which has happened. Um, muy bien. But Xochitepec or Xochimilco. Unlike Xochimilco, Xochitepec, close to where I am from, uh, it's a little pretty town uh, in the kind of the mountain, the outskirts. It's really nice. Uh, I used to go to, to buy... Uh, corn in the cup 
Anyway, that's a personal thing. Uh, seguimos. So it's the S and the X, al final la palabra. Ahora, vamos a ver, don't think that this world is so easy. Uh, it's complicated. It gets complicated. <laughs> and why? Well, uh, first, I'm going to tell you, there are some exceptions. But even though they are except exceptions, they make sense. Oh, yeah, they make sense. Por ejemplo, expectativa. Oh, tengo grandes expectativas en mi vida. I have great expectations in my life. Expectativa. Se escribe con X, pero espectador se escribe con S. Now, you're going to tell me, Ana, you just told us that if it's another consonant here, then you have to put the X. Well, that's, this is a, an exception, but it makes sense because this comes uh, from a Latin word and this comes from expectare, to expect like English, expecting something, great expectations, expectare. This doesn't come from the same root. This evolved from a different word, spectare, which was the audience, the, 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 the person who was looking at it. So it's like to look, spectare was mirar, to see, right? And this was expectare, so different origins. That's why now it's different because they have different origins. So they evolve differently. So espectador, same, esplendor, esplendido, esplendor, all those are with S. So I wrote you this uh, three, so you remember, okay? Uh, a lot of people um, misspell these words. They think it's with X, but ojo, no es con X, es con S. Muy bien. Ahora, just think about a lot of these X words come from Latin or from Greek. So I wrote a few of prefix, which means like the syllables that are in the beginning of a word, prefijos, ex, extra, ex, maxi. Por ejemplo, eh, eh, exacto, extracurricular, hexágono, maxi falda, like maxi skirt, hexágono, hexagon. Flex, flexible, lex, léxico, oxy, oxígeno, sex, sexenio, like every six years, for example, sexenio, en, en México, el presidente cambia cada seis años, cada sexenio, cada seis años. Tax, el impuesto, la tasa, um, uh, taxi, por ejemplo, uh, an interesting origin anyway, maybe I'll tell you in a different lesson. Um, now, speaking of origin, now you're going to tell me, oh, but you know, you just told us that between vowels is the sound is going to be X and your own country is between vowels, an E and an I, a, una E y una I. And I hear you say Mexico, Mexico lindo y querido. Si muero lejos de ti, México, Oaxaca, Texas, Oaxaca. A mí me encanta Oaxaca, pero nunca he ido a Texas. Uh, pero yo soy de México. Entonces, puedo decir, yo soy mexicana. Me gustaría vivir en Texas, pero vivo en Oaxaca. And that's a different sound, right? Yeah, it is not an X and it is not an S. It is a kind of a J in Spanish, like, or if you want to put it in English, it's like the H, right? Mexico, Mexico, Oaxaca, Texas. And that is way because we preserve the ancient way of writing them. That's it. These are historical words. So we keep them as they are. Mexico, it's also correct to spell it with a J. Yeah, some people do, and that's correct. But as a Mexican, this spelling is part of your history, but part of your identity. And I think happens, it happens the same with Texas and Oaxaca. They are part of the history. They are part of the, the antique value that the, this letter had. So it was written like that. Now it's still written like that, even though it doesn't fit with our rules or our conclusions, we 
try, try to draw to learn a language. So just don't forget, if you want to be like a Mexicano <laughs> or you want to be French, like then you spell it with an X, although with the J is also correct and so on and so forth. Mexico, Oaxaca, Texas. So they conserve the, the history, right? Like the ancient value. Don't forget, in the past, many years ago, the X used to be pronounced as sh, so it would be like Mexico, right? Uh, the Mexicas, uh, Mexicas, that ancient culture, Mexicas. Uh, so it came Mexico, but the X changed its uh, um, pronunciation throughout the years. So it, it evolved in a different way, but it was, used to be sh. Uh, now, I wrote this nixtamal, con la i, nixtamal, nixtamal is like the, the corn that they put with the calcium, kind of like what they used to make tortillas, but the nixtamal is like the still preparing thing, right? Like when you're going to make fresh tortillas from scratch, you put the corn, the calcium, uh, a lot of things. I, I don't forget because I buy the tortillas in la tortilleria. <laughs> I don't make them myself, but I'll ask my mom. Um, what how many things she puts, nixtamal. That's an uh, indigenous word, that's a Nahuatl word, so it usually it's like nixtamal. But speaking of those indigenous words, there are something, uh, some kind of um, tips to give you. When it's an indigenous word, a Mayan word, a Nahuatl word, you're going to say uh, nixtamal, but when it starts, when the... the um, when the word starts with an X, especially in the Caribbean, you know, if you travel down there, you're going to see, for example, it says shelha or shkare. So they pronounce the X as sh. And that's also kind of like the antique old value, the history. Just in Ixtamal is, is different because it's not in the beginning. Um, it's, a, it's a special word, Ixtamal. Not that you're going to use it. Often, I don't see yourself making tortillas from scratch anyway. <laughs> you probably buy the El Paso ones. Oh, no, no, you probably buy in La Tortilleria. Cholo Escuincle, right? El Cholo Escuincle, ese perro feo con cuatro pelos. Todo feísimo. El Cholo Escuincle. That's also an ancient delicious dog. So <laughs> it conserved that old value of the uh, spelling and pronunciation. So, Xolo Escuincle, Nixtamal, Texas, Oaxaca, Mexico, Xcare, Xelha. In those indigenous words, you might want to think about sh or x. Muy bien. Um, I hope you enjoyed my lesson. If you like my lesson, subscribe to my channel. But not only subscribe to my channel, you can also ring the bell because if you do not ring the bell then you won't get the notifications and you want to make the not you want to get notifications when i upload my videos so you can keep learning spanish because maybe months go by and you forget so don't forget ring the bell next to the subscribe button there is a bell una campana click on it and then you'll get notifications. Thank you for watching my videos. Uh, if you like to donate to my channel, do so, and I'll thank you very much. If you can't, then I'll thank you for watching my videos. Um, it's nice to see you, and I hope you go through this lesson. And don't forget to go to my other lessons about letters in Spanish. I have tons of lessons. It's time to get them back into your head. Adios, hasta luego, hasta pronto.